Uh, not all about how low can you go. I'm going to explain how you can make um, a humpy, pretty much. This is sort of uh, the way Aboriginals often enough out in the real wide areas live. Um, and of course, you know, this, I can tell you a hundred thousand things that white yuppie bureaucrats in the government have done to help Aboriginals, not realising that the Aboriginals aren't interested, it doesn't suit them, it doesn't suit the climate that they live in and a whole stack of other things. Um, and they have built houses out there and I know of a bloke personally who's been, you know, his brother was one of the contractors to build some of this stuff and he's working for his brother. Um, and I've been told that they go and cut the floorboards out by somebody else and use the floorboards of these houses as kindling for a fire because it's good fire would go into waste and they just get the chainsaw in there or even the handsaw and, and they cut the flaming floor out and then they just have little tracks going to each bed. This bloke I work with now told me that before they'd even finished the house, before they'd got the gutters on and, and stuff like that, the house wasn't even finished and they'd cut the floorboards out. So, Aboriginals, normal white man's houses don't really suit all of them. If you see the series of bush mechanics I've got, there's one there who says that he wouldn't want a house because it'd be too big, and then all his relatives would have to come, uh, all his relatives not would have to come, but just would come anyway, and would live with him, and then he'd have so many people in the house that drive him nuts because he's just used to living him and his wife, and that's it. And then he said, and on top of that, it would be getting dirty, you'd have to mop the floors and, and all this stuff. And he said, I don't want that, I'm not interested in that. He said, I was brought up living in a humpy, and I like living in humpies, and that's the way I'll do it. Um, so I'm going to sort of show you a design of humpy um, that they have. Actually, I might show you two designs. Um, and, yeah, they live in humpies, you know, out of choice. Um, some of these humpies have open ends each side and they basically like they've got this idea whereby having plenty of airflow it's more hygienic uh, so that's why they do it but they have these ones where they have a, a sheet or two like a, they use a lot of corrugated iron roof sheets for these and they have like a sheet or two on the top and then another one down like that and then that side wall will be the wall for the next one beside it and you got all these ones and it's it's sort of it's led to a joke um, what's an Aboriginal uh, with two steel roof sheets first time owner what's an Aboriginal with ten steel roof sheets housing developer Anyway, enough of the bad jokes. Now let's get on to the um, couple of designs I've seen. Now, what they do, if you can get your hands on a, basically Y forks, um, like trees that are like, your branch goes up and then it forks at one point. Um, you can basically make something which looks like this. Now you got a Y fork there in the ground, another Y fork there, and then in the two Y's you, you have another beam sits across the top. Now you can secure that with a bit of fencing wire, but I'll tell you a little trick that old farmers do around here, and my father does it, um, and that is if you want to get a piece of wood into the ground good and proper, a post whatever, you've got to dig a hole. Now you dig a hole slightly bigger than that post and then when it's about deep enough um, and you know you want it basically at least a third of it's got to be under the ground so you dig it so there's like at least a you know about a third under the ground um, the more the better actually and 
you you know, it's a hole that's big enough to sit the post in. Um, and then what you do is you get the crowbar, and you don't get the sharp end of a crowbar. Like I'm talking, I'm not talking Jimmy bar that you mongrels rip the windows open with to steal stuff out of your house. I'm talking crowbar. You know, the big ones about like you know, six foot tall sort of thing. Um, you can get the end of those, or even just a steel pipe with an end cap on it. Um, and after you've dug the hole, put the bit of wood in. You try and stuff dirt back down in there. Now you don't just try and you stuff a bit in with the shovel, and then you don't just sort of fill it to the top. What you do is you put a bit in, like like maybe like four inches or something like that, maybe five inches, and then you start packing it down, either with the big head end, not the pointy end, but the head end of a crowbar, or if you've got um, you know a lump of pipe with an end cap on it you use that and bang it down um, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to compact that soil so you put a little bit in back in the hole when you've already got the um, post in there and then you push it in you pack it in real hard and then you put a little bit more in with a shovel and then you pack that in hard again and you keep going keep going keep going and each time you pack it in hard and after you've done the first couple um, you know, and she's like maybe like a foot or so around that you've already put back in. Um, the post should just stay in place, uh, and you can keep doing more. But you just you put it back in, and this this is really good for clay. This is more specifically for clay, um, but it'll work for sand. Uh, but most of the times I've seen it done, I've seen it done around here on clay, and I've even seen it done on TV with clay. Um, and you know, you you pack it in. And if you're a bit a, sh a bit short by the time you finish, you shouldn't be really that short. But if you are, you know, go and get a shovel full of dirt nearby and put it in. So you know, you pack it in so it's basically level with the rest of the ground. And you do that with one end, and then you do that with the second end to get your two bits in. And you have you know a bit of a length between one and the other. And then in your two Ys, you put another piece of straight wood in. And then you can loop around like sort of like X shape you know you loop one direction and then you sort of come around the other way and like that fencing wire on these two bits that um, to basically attach the one that sort of sits along to the actual wire and then when you get this you can lay roof sheets down on one side on one angle and roof sheets on the other side on another angle uh, and you can put in a few nails or whatever to hold those in place. Um, and you say, well, how do we keep the bottom in place? Good question. Rocks. So you put rocks against all the bottom of it. Now, I've, the ones I've seen done, they do like that. Um, and then what they do is, after they've done that with leaky old second-hand roof sheets, then they put black plastic, black, you know, film plastic, Thick enough stuff, and they put that over the top, and then they put the rocks, at sort of where the roof sheets stop, and the black plastic lays against it. They stick the rocks up there, and then they also pour a lot of sand on it. So basically, where the roof sheets come down and touch the ground, then you've got the black plastic over the top, and then you lay the rocks on the black plastic against where the roof sheets touch the ground and then the remainder of the black plastic you pour sand on top of that um, to stop it from flapping and that's one way um, you can make a humpy and you've got to sort of work out um, you know a, a door basically will be in the gap of one end of you know in between one of the end posts and the, and the roof sheet and you can go in there um, as for actual closing doors, I don't really know, but I don't think they're terribly worried because it gives them a bit of airflow. And they like the airflow. A lot of these are out in desert areas, you've got to remember. Um, the other one I've seen is the same thing again, but instead of putting, you basically got two of them, and then you have the roof sheets between the beam that goes across between the two forks. You have roof sheets nailed to that on one end, 
and then where you have the second one, you nail the roof sheets on further down to that. So instead of, it's sort of like, same thing again, so it's like that, and then what you do between that one and that one, that's where your roof sheets are laying. Uh, but you've got to have one that's slightly higher than the other to allow the rainwater to come off. But that that doesn't do much. You know, that's something that um, you can snooze under during the day. It's, it's got no protection against the weather. Um, but that's one that I have seen uh, done. Um, you know, and it, if you're one of these people that likes to have an afternoon nap, you know, that's a nice place to have it because you're sort of shaded by the sun. But, yeah, they call them humpy. H-U-M-P-Y, I think. That's how you spell it. I don't know. Some people might spell it I-E. But, but anyway, um, that's, yeah, how to make an Aboriginal humpy. And they're not the, the most glorious in the world, but by hell you can make it from nothing but rubbish. And, you know, they're, they're sort of waterproof. They're also bloody hot. Um, but, you know, it, it's sort of, um, you may decide that would be a good place to keep your firewood or something like that. Um, if you want to keep dry firewood, um, I do suggest putting some old pallets inside. Or the other stunt is you can lay wood on the ground, 4x2 going in one direction, and sort of have other bits of wood going in the opposite direction old floorboards, well, bits of old, you know, corrugated iron roof sheets, and just give yourself that few inches off the ground and it'll stop water on the ground from getting in there and getting all the bottom of your wood wet. Um, but yeah, that's just uh, one I thought I'd um, show because they are around in this country often enough. The other easy way of, of doing some of these, and I think the ones I said about where they're square and they sort of use each one uses its end wall for the next wall for the next one. Um, I think they use star pickets for them ones. Uh, a lot of these, you know, you got to realise the Aboriginals can almost just sleep under a damn tree. And they're not the sort of people that get exposure, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, one of the ones that we have in this country that I thought I'd show you.